We are back with a new section of this course, Scripting. In this section, we will see how to use ClickView's built-in scripting language to transform our data. So, we will start with the script editor and then explore the most important script statements. Then we will learn how to use them to manipulate tables and control the flow of the script. We will also look at operators and functions for dealing with various data types. Moving ahead, we will go through the options for debugging your script. At the end, we will learn how to organize and standardize our script and how to reuse your script. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with the script editor and script statements. In this video, we will take an in-depth look at the various functions that are available in the script editor environment. Then we will explore different script statements for loading information and tables. So, we will again be expanding the airline operations.qvw document that we worked on in the previous section. When you've opened the document, let's open the script editor by selecting File and then Edit Script from the menu, or you can also press Ctrl E. You will notice that the script editor consists of a menu bar, a toolbar, a script pane, and a tool pane. The menu offers a wide range of options, some of which the toolbar offers shorthand icons. For now, let me point out a few of the most important options to take note of. The first one is the Reload option within the File menu that runs the entire script to reload the data. Next is Save Entire Document As, which saves the entire document, not just the script. Then, within the Tab menu, we have Add Tab, Rename, and Demote. The area that draws the most attention is the big white area, the Script pane. This is the main working area of the script editor. When a new ClickView file is created, the new script is populated with a main tab and a few lines where number interpretation variables are added. These lines tell ClickView how to interpret various numbers and are generated automatically based on your operating system settings. When looking further at the script pane, we can see that the lines are numbered and that the editor has syntax highlighting. Based on their meaning, words in the script have a different color or font decoration. For example, we see that the word set is shown in bold blue text, while the text immediately behind it is shown in italic gray text. It is important to note that click view statements always end with a semicolon. Previously, we only used the data tab of the tool pane. When looking at the tool pane, we will notice that there are some additional tabs. The functions tab gives a categorized overview of all the script functions within ClickView. Further on, in this section, we will have an in-depth look at some of these functions. Next is the Variables tab, which shows user and system variables. This tab is populated after each reload, so in a new document, it will be blank. The Settings tab contains some additional settings with regards to system access and password scrambling. Now that we have had a first look at the script editor, Let's get a little more hands-on and look at how we can create scripts. A ClickView script is made up of a sequence of statements. These statements are typically used to either manipulate the data or conditionally control the way in which the script is executed. For example, we may want to combine two tables together or skip over part of a script if a condition is not met. It is important to note that ClickView script is executed in a sequential order. This means that script is executed top to bottom and left to right. Let's go ahead and see how to build the aircraft dimension table. For this, we first need to load the aircraft information into ClickView. So, open the airline operations.qvw document we saved in the previous section and press Ctrl E to open the script editor. Now, on the data tab of the tool pane, make sure the relative paths checkbox is enabled. Next, Go to the Aircraft tab and delete all script from the tab. Click the Table Files button in the tool pane and navigate to the CSVs folder within the Data Files. Select the file Aircraft Base File.csv. Rename the fields by clicking on the column headers and replacing the text. First one as Aircraft Type, second one Aircraft Group Type, next one Aircraft Name, and then Aircraft Manufacturer, Aircraft Name. Aircraft name abbreviated, aircraft begin data, and the last one, aircraft end date. Now complete the table file wizard window by clicking on Finish. Replace the directory 
text with aircraft types. This will assign that name to the table. Note how the source file name and path are specified in a relative manner, that is, the location of the source file relative to the click view document. This happens because we enabled the relative paths checkbox. Had we disabled the checkbox, the full path and file name would have been used. For example, using relative paths is convenient when your document will be moved around from a development to a production environment. Take a minute to review the rest of the script and see if your script matches. The next step is to enrich the aircraft type data by adding the data from the aircraft group.csv file. To do this, first place the cursor below the last line of the aircraft types load statement. Click on the table files button in the tool pane and navigate to the CSVs folder. Select the file aircraft group.csv. Notice that the headers in this file are not automatically detected by ClickView. Change the value of the labels drop down box to embedded labels. Notice that the key column aircraft group ID does not match the name we've given to the corresponding column in the aircraft types table. Correct this by changing the name of the column to aircraft group type. Complete the table file wizard window by clicking on finish. Replace the directory text with aircraft groups to assign that name to the table. Now, save the document by pressing the same icon on the toolbar by selecting the option Save Entire Document within the File menu, or you can simply press Ctrl S. And here's how the resulting code should look. Now, to run the script and to see what the result is, select the Reload option or press Ctrl R, or you can even click the Reload button on the toolbar to reload the script. When the script is finished loading, you will see the Sheet Properties dialog. Click on OK to close it. You will notice that two of our list boxes have gone missing, aircraft group and aircraft type. This has happened because the fields that were used for these list boxes were removed from the data model. Let's remove the two list boxes and replace them with a single aircraft multibox. For this, right-click on the list box labeled Unavailable Aircraft Group and select Remove. As this is a linked object, Select Delete All to remove the object from all sheets. Repeat this step for the list box labeled Unavailable Aircraft Type. Now create a new multibox and add the aircraft name and aircraft engine type. Next, we style the multibox and position it below the carrier name list box, and we give it a title, Aircraft. Add the multibox to the analysis and reports sheets as a linked object by holding Control Shift while dragging the multibox onto the respective tabs. After this, verify that the data is associated by selecting the name field from the aircraft multibox and checking if the engine type and number of engines drop down lists are being updated. Now that we have loaded these two tables, let's load the final file aircraft 2010 update.csv into ClickView. Remember, that this file is very similar to the aircraft base file.csv file. The only difference is that there is no ID for an aircraft group, just the actual aircraft group name. So let's load the file. Go to File and select the Edit Script option. Place the cursor below the last line of the current script. Click on the Table Files button in the tool pane and navigate to the CSVs folder within the data files. Select the file aircraft 2010 update.csv. With the exception of AC group name, rename the fields. So go to every field and enter the respective names. Now complete the table file wizard window by clicking on finish and replace the directory. Text with aircraft types. 2010 to assign that name to the table. If you did not turn on automatic saving, save the document, and here's how the resulting script should look. Reload the document by selecting File and clicking on Reload. Once the script is finished, click on OK to close the Sheet Properties dialog. Now add the fields AC Group Name and Aircraft Begin Date to the Aircraft Multibox. We interact with the aircraft multibox, we notice that something strange is going on. There are three fields with overlapping information. 
AC group name contains information that is also shown in the engine type and number of engines drop down lists. When we interact with the data, we will notice that any aircraft that has an aircraft begin date field before 2010 is associated with the engine type and number of engines fields, while later models are associated with the AC underscore group name field. When we open the table viewer, we notice that the data model contains a synthetic key table named SYN1. Let's see a practical example of how to resolve this issue. Remember how ClickView's associative logic works. It automatically associates fields that have the same name, and those associations between tables can only be based on a single field. Well, the aircraft types and aircraft types 2010 tables that we loaded contain seven fields that match between these tables. To resolve this issue, ClickView created a synthetic key by creating a key for each unique combination of the seven fields. We will solve the problem by merging all these tables into a single aircraft types dimension table. Here's the schematic that shows the general approach we will be taking. So, we will begin by joining the aircraft groups table to the aircraft types table. We will then concatenate the aircraft types 2010 table to the result we got by joining the aircraft groups table to the aircraft types table. To achieve this, we go back to the script editor by pressing Ctrl E. Now go to the load statement for the file aircraftgroup.csv and replace the text aircraft groups with the text left join aircraft types. Next, go to the load statement for the file aircraft 2010 update.csv and replace the text aircraft types 2010 with the text concatenate aircraft types. Let's replace the line reading AC group name with the subfield AC group name, one as aircraft engine type, and press return to create a new line. On this new line, enter subfield AC group name, two as aircraft number of engines. Now, beneath the load statement for the file aircraft group, Add the code drop field in square braces aircraft group type from aircraft types. Let's quickly go through the impact of the changes we made to the script. So, by adding the left join aircraft types statement, we tell ClickView not to load the data from the aircraftgroup.csv file into a separate table. Instead, it will be joined to the table specified between the parentheses. A join is made over the common fields between both tables, in this case, aircraft group type. Next, by adding the concatenate aircraft type statement, we tell ClickView not to load the data from the aircraft 2010 update file to a separate table. Instead, the rows are appended to the table specified between the parentheses. Fields that are not shared between tables, for example the field aircraft group type, get null values for the rows that are missing this field. The AC group name column contains both the engine type and number of engines fields, separated by a comma. The subfield expression uses the subfield function to split the AC group name string into subfields based on the comma delimiter. The first subfield returns the aircraft engine type table. The second subfield returns the aircraft number of engines table. As we no longer require the aircraft group type key field, the drop field statement is used to remove it from the aircraft types table. To see the effect of our changes, let's first save the entire document and reload the script by selecting Reload from the menu. After reloading has finished, open the table viewer window by selecting table viewer from the file menu or by pressing Ctrl T. As we can see, all source tables have been merged into a single aircraft types dimension table. It looks nice, doesn't it? In this video, we have learned to use the script editor and worked with different script statements.